Just a couple days ago, on October 25th, this site was featured as site of the day on awards. Really solid work by the team at Type 8 Studio. The site had more than just one impressive animation. There were a bunch of really well-crafted interactions throughout. Now, of course, not everything felt instantly within reach, but quite a few sections looked like they could definitely be rebuilt using GSAP and scroll trigger. One that really caught my eye was this scroll-based content slider, where each scroll event smoothly reveals a new slide while animating a vertical progress indicator on the site. I was genuinely impressed by how polished this felt and thought this would be a great experiment to recreate, especially since it's been a while since we last explored scroll-driven sliders on the channel. So I spent a few hours putting together my own version and ended up building something that captures all the base animations of the inspiration using just JavaScript and GSAP. As you can see, it has it all, the text reveal powered by split text, the image transitions, the side progress bar, and the animated vertical slide indicator, all powered by GSAP. In this video, I'll walk you through how it all comes together and how you can build similar scroll-driven experiences in under 200 lines of code using GSAP and Scroll Trigger. If you find these kinds of rebuilds helpful, be sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And if you'd like to access the source code for this project, along with hundreds of other similar micro projects and a brand new website template every month, you can check out the pro membership via the link in the description. Alright, let's jump into the code. Let's start with the HTML. First, I'll create a simple nav just to mimic the look of the original site. Inside this nav, I'll add two elements, one for the logo and one for some dummy side info on the right side. This doesn't impact the animation, it's just there to match the layout styling later. Next, let's create the intro section. This part is just to give the scroll experience a bit more context, kind of like a lead-in. For now, I'll add an H1 with some placeholder copy, but you can leave this empty if you want. It has nothing to do with the actual scroll animation we are building. Now, let's move on to the main section. This is where the slider lives. I'll create a section with the class slider, and inside this, I'll divide it into three parts. Slider images, slider title, and slider indicator. Let's walk through them one by one. First, inside slider images, I'll add a single image element. This will be the image for the first slide. Later on, we'll dynamically append new images into this container as the user scrolls based on the active index. Next, inside the slider title, I'll place an h1 tag with the first slide's text. Just like the images, we'll update this dynamically as well using JavaScript each time the active slide changes. Now for the slider indicator, I'll split it into two parts. One is slider indices where we'll show numbered markers on the side and the other is slider progress bar which will animate based on scroll position. For the slider indices, I'll leave it empty for now. We are going to generate and append all the markers and numbers dynamically in JavaScript based on how many slides we have. And inside the slider progress bar, I'll add one more div called slider progress. We'll animate this element vertically by scaling its y value to represent the scroll progress. Finally, to wrap it all up, I'll add one last section called outro. This works just like the intro. I'll throw in some dummy text inside an H1 just to give the slider a clean exit. But you can totally replace this with any other section depending on your site layout. That's pretty much it for the HTML setup. Next, we'll jump into the CSS and start styling everything in place. First, I'm importing two fonts from Google Fonts. One is Clean Sans Serif that we'll use as the main typeface across the site and the other is a monospace font for things like labels and UI text. Next, I'll reset the defaults, removing margin and padding and setting everything to use border box sizing. Then, I'll apply the main font to the entire page by setting it on the body. Now, for the headings, I'll keep them bold and uppercase with a slightly tight letter spacing and line height. This gives the title that bold, editorial style look we want for the slider. And for the smaller text, like the nav and indicators, I'll use the monospace font just to add a bit of contrast and give it that clean UI feel. For all the images, I'll make sure they scale to fit their containers without any distortion. This will help when we animate them, especially during transitions. Next, I'll style the navigation. It's fixed to the top and stretched across the full width. We'll display it as a flex row with the logo on one side and the site info on the other. Inside the nav, the text is all uppercase and a bit smaller to keep things subtle. And for the logo itself, I'll give it a slight background blur, some padding, and a light border just to help it stand out over the page content. Next, 
Now let's move on to the sections. Each section will take up the full screen height and sit on top of each other vertically. The intro and outro sections will have a dark background with white text. I'll center the content and limit the width of the heading so it doesn't stretch too far. This gives us clean bookends to the slider animation. Now inside the slider, I'll start with the image container. This is absolutely positioned and fills the entire screen behind everything else. I'll also add a dark overlay on top of it just to improve the contrast for the title text. Each image inside this container will be positioned and prepared for transform animations. This makes it easier to fade and scale them smoothly as we transition between slides. Next up is the slider title. I'll position it in the center of the screen, slightly offset to the left. We'll give it a fixed width and light color so it's easy to read over the image. This is where we'll animate the title lines for each slide using split text. Then we have got the slider indicator. It will sit on the right side of the screen and align vertically to the center, same as the title, just mirrored. Inside this, we have two elements, the slide indices and the progress bar. The indices will stack vertically with a bit of spacing in between, each one showing the current slide number and a small animated marker line. We'll animate both of these later when the active slide changes. The marker starts invisible and we'll scale it in as we scroll. Right next to that, we have the progress bar. It's a thin vertical track with a progress wheel sitting on top of it. We'll animate the fill using vertical scale as the user scrolls through the slider. Then, I'll add a quick utility style for the text lines. This is for split text. We'll make sure every line block can animate smoothly using transforms without breaking the layout. Finally, I'll handle the responsive styles. Once the screen gets narrower than a certain point, I'll shrink the heading size a bit and remove the navigation entirely just to simplify the layout on smaller devices. I'll also adjust the slider title, pushing it toward the top, giving it full width and adding some padding for breathing room. Same with the indicator, we'll move it toward the bottom to make sure it stays visible without overlapping anything. And that's it for the styling. Now we are ready to start wiring up the animations in JavaScript. Alright, now we are ready to jump into the JavaScript. First, I'll import the libraries we are going to use in this project. Gzap for all the animations, scroll trigger which helps us hook animations to scroll progress, split text which lets us animate individual lines or characters of text, and Lenis which is a smooth scrolling utility that replaces the browser's default scroll behavior. We'll register these plugins so Gzap can recognize them later. Next, I'll set up Lenis. Now, for this part, I'm just pasting a small block directly from the Lenis documentation. We are not customizing anything here. I'm keeping all the default config. This block simply initializes Lenis, connects it with scroll trigger, and makes sure the animation frames stay in sync with Gzap's internal ticker. So, this just sets up smooth scrolling and makes sure scroll trigger knows how far down the page we have actually scrolled. After that, I'll define the core content, the slides array. This is an array of objects. Each one represents a single slide in our scroll slider. Every object here contains two things, a title, which is the line of poetic text we'll animate in, and an image, which points to the background photo we want to show. This is where all the slider content comes from. We'll reference this array to dynamically update the images, text, and indicators based on scroll position. Next, I'll calculate the total scroll distance we need to pin the slider. To do that, I'm multiplying the height of the viewport by the number of slides in our array. This gives us a scroll range that's exactly long enough to fit all the transitions. Then I'm grabbing references to the key DOM elements we'll interact with later, the progress bar, the container that holds the background images, the container for the slide titles, and the area where we'll display the numbered text markers on the side. These are all the pieces we'll animate when the slide changes, so we'll need easy access to them. Lastly, in this block, I'll set two variables we'll use throughout, active slide which tracks the current index so we know when to update, and current split which stores the result of the split text instance for the current title. We'll need this so we can revert the previous animation when moving to the next one. And that wraps up the setup block. 
Next, we'll build out the function that creates the slide indicators dynamically based on the number of slides in the array. For that, I'll create a function called create indices. This is going to generate the numbered indicators you see at the right side of the screen, one for each slide in the array. We are building these dynamically so we don't have to hard code anything. That way, the indicators will automatically update if we add or remove the slides later. Inside the function, I'll start by clearing out anything that might already be inside the slider indices container just to make sure we are working with a clean slate. Then I'll loop through all the slides array using for each. I don't need the actual slide content here, so I'm only using the index. Now for each slide, I'll format the index number, I'll convert it to a string and add one to make it one based and pad it with a leading zero. So slide one becomes zero one, slide two becomes zero two and so on just to keep the look consistent. Then I'll create a new paragraph element. This will hold both the marker line and the numbered label. I'll set a data index on it so we can reference it later if needed. Inside this paragraph, I like two spans. One is the marker, which is the horizontal line that grows when the slide becomes active. The other is the index number, which fits in or out based on which slide we are on. Finally, I'll append this whole indicator element to the slider indices container. Once that's done, I'll check if the index is zero, meaning it's the first slide. If it is, I'll set the opacity of the number to full and scale the marker line to fully visible. This highlights the first slide as the active one right from the start. For all the other slides, I lower the number's opacity and hide the marker by scaling it down to zero. So this setup basically creates the full list of index markers and visually highlights the active one, which will later update on scroll. Next, I'll create a function called animate new slide, which takes an index as a parameter. This function is responsible for switching the slide. It handles both the image transition and triggers the matching title and indicator animations. First, I'll create a new image element in JavaScript. I'll set the image source using the path from the current slide object in the array and also give it a descriptive alt tag for now. Before animating it in, I'll set its initial state using gsap's set method. I'll start it slightly zoomed in and completely transparent so it's invisible and scaled up a little bit. Then I'll append that new image to the slider images container. Now that the image is in the DOM, I'll animate it using gsap. First, I'll fade in the opacity so the image becomes visible and at the same time, I'll scale it back down to its original size. This gives us that smooth cinematic zoom out effect. The image starts large and fades in gently while shrinking slightly, kind of like a camera settling into focus. After that, I'll do a quick cleanup step. I'll check how many images are currently inside this container and if there are more than three, I'll remove the oldest ones from the top. This just helps us keep the DOM light. We don't need to keep every image ever rendered since only the most recent few are visible. Finally, I'll call two other functions from inside this block. Animate new title. This will update and animate the new title. Animate indicators. This will update the indicator marker on the side. We'll build those functions next, but for now, this is full logic that handles image transitions and slide switching. Now that we have set up how a new slide image appears, let's add the animations that update the slide indicator and the slide title. First, I'll create a new function called animate indicators. This one takes in the index of the current active slide and it updates the vertical markers on the side of the screen to reflect that. Inside this function, I'll first grab all the paragraph elements inside the slider indices container. These are the little rows that shows the marker line and the slide number. Then I'll loop through each one using for each. For every item, I'll grab two things the marker, which is the horizontal line that stretches when active, and the index, which is the number next to it. Now I'll check if the current loop index matches the active slide index. If it does, that means this is the marker we want to highlight. So I'll animate its number to full opacity and stretch the marker line across using a horizontal scale. Both animations are timed the same, so they feel tight and responsive. If it's not the active slide, I'll tone it down. The number fades to a lower opacity and the marker line scales back to zero, making it disappear visually. So this function basically just updates the look of the side markers whenever the slide changes, highlighting the current one and fading out the rest. Next, I'll create a function called animate new title. This one handles the title text that appears on each slide, the lines which rise into view. Before we animate the new one, I'll first check if current split exists. If it does, that means we already split the previous slide's title into animated lines, so we need to revert that first to clean up. Then I'll replace the entire title area with the new slide's text. I'm injecting a new h1 into the slider title container using the title from the current slide object in the array. Once that's in place, I'll use the split text plugin to break the setting into individual lines. Each line will get a class and will also enable masking so we can animate the lines in one by one using a vertical movement through the mask. 
as stored this result into current split so we can revert it again later when the slide changes after that i'll set the starting state for every line each one is pushed down and hidden so it's not visible when added to the tom and now comes the animation i'll animate each line upward into view using a staggered delay between each line this gives us that smooth flowing title entrance effect the motion is subtle but adds a ton of polish especially when paired with the image transitions behind it. And finally, after defining all these functions, I'll call create indices function once right after. This will run our indicator setup code as soon as the page loads, generating the markers and highlighting the first one by default. That wraps up this part of the scroll slider logic. Next, we'll wire up the scroll trigger to actually pin the section and update the slides as the user scrolls through the page. Alright, now let's set up the final piece of the slider using scroll trigger. This is what connects everything we have built to the user scroll. So I'll create a new scroll trigger instance. First, I'll set the trigger to the slider section. This tells scroll trigger which part of the page we want to pin and control. We'll start the animation as soon as the top of the slider hits the top of the viewport and we'll set the end value to be equal to our pin distance, which is the scroll length we calculated earlier based on the number of slides. Then I'll enable scrub. This is what allows the timeline to sync smoothly with the scroll position rather than playing like a normal animation. I'll also pin the entire section so it stays fixed in place while we scroll through it and keep pin spacing turned on so the layout flow stays intact after it unpins. Now inside the onUpdate callback, we'll handle all the logic that needs to happen every time the scroll position changes. First, I'll animate the progress bar. This is the vertical bar on the side and I'll scale its Y value based on how far we have scrolled through the total distance. This gives us a real-time scroll progress indicator. Then, I'll calculate the current slide index. To do that, I'm multiplying the scroll progress, which is a value between 0 and 1, by the number of slides. Then I'll use floor function to round it down to the nearest whole number so we get a clean, discrete slide index. Next, I'll check if the current slide has changed compared to the previous one. If it has, and if we are still within bounds, I'll update the active slide and call animate new slide with the new index. This triggers the full slide change, the image transition, the title animation, and the updated indicator. And that's it. The slider is now fully scroll driven. Its scroll movement automatically triggers the right image, title, and indicator, all synced together using GSAP scroll trigger and split text. So that wraps up the entire build. Hope you found the video helpful. See you in the next one.